everyone, and welcome to our next episode in our series on how to leverage Altair's data analytics solutions. My name is LaRue Brown, and I'm a senior director for data solutions here at Altair, and I'm going to spend the next few moments with you walking you through how we can leverage our RapidMiner platform, specifically a component called Monarch, to extract data from payroll. Over the last few sessions, we talked high level how to leverage the solution uh, to extract data from PDFs, how to pull data from Excel files, how to do data normalization, and then we also did aggreg aggregations uh, and combining data from multiple data sets. Now I want to look at how we can combine all of that together to a full workflow design where I'm taking data from a payroll report and I'm able to then compare that to a 401k compliance type of report and I'd see if I can identify where there are any sort of discrepancies. And we're gonna take take together and combine all the things we've, we've learned over the last few sessions in this overall series. So just as a reminder, uh, we're gonna be leveraging the RapidMiner platform to do this. Uh, the platform is designed to be a full end-to-end -end data analytics platform that allows you to do uh, robust machine learning and AI type applications, all in a low code type format. Um, it's a unified platform for all folks in the organization. So for those who do like to code, if they so desire, they can write Jupyter Notebooks or other types of codes uh, that are gonna be of uh, relevance for the use case at hand. But more importantly, they can share that code with other users who are non-coders, and those users can operate either in a similar automatic fashion or in a workflow note-based design type workflow. Again, to make it a lot easier for them to engage with the overall solution. And in particular, the component we're gonna look at today is uh, Altair Monarch. This is a part of the RapidMiner platform. And as I mentioned, this is what helps us to extract the data from those various types of reports and do uh, essentially kind of data normalization, data preparation, uh, and migration of data if, for ETL type use case. So for our particular example, we wanna look at a few different reports. Today, as I mentioned, we're going to do a payroll extraction uh, from a given document, and I'm gonna compare that to a 401k compliance uh, type report. So let's start off first by looking just at the, at the payroll report itself. Here I have an actual payroll journal, and you can see sort of the structure of this. This is really where Monarch shines on working with these multi-hierarchical structured reports. In this case, I can see I'll have at the very high level uh, the department that individuals work at, and that may change variously throughout the throughout the report. I'll also have the individual, the employee, along with their ID. And then I'll have earnings information, withholdings, deductions, and then uh, just some additional information about the overall pay, whether they received a check or not, how it was the, sent out, the ID number for said uh, deposit, et cetera. Um, but key thing that I need to do here, uh, one of the requirements for our team is we need to ensure that the information being extracted from a person's pay uh, for their 401k matches their percentage that, that they had requested. So in this report, this report will show me the actual deduction amount, and I can pull the underlying percentage that was assigned to each employee, but I can't really see if the uh, values match what, what should be extracted. So where do we get that information from? Well, it just so happens that the uh, the company that manages our 401k, in this case, we're leveraging Fidelity, uh, generates a report for us, and it will show us exactly what the actual deferral amount should be for each employee. So you can kind of already see what we're looking to do here is I want to take the information that's being pulled from a person's uh, paycheck uh, and verify that what we are actually uh, uh, pulling for their 401k matches what they've had here. And the reason this is important is because a lot of times employees will change their deduction. You can see in this case, we're having an old value and a new value. A lot of times they will change their deduction and there, there's a regulatory period in which that change has to take effect. Um, for employees. So this is just a way to just kind of validate we are in compliance when someone makes a change. I want to be able to identify when those individuals make that change and more importantly, ensure that we get that that's reflected in, in what we're pulling from their pay um, moving forward. So we're going to see if we can take these two documents, first combine them together, and then finally identify where there's a discrepancy from what was actually being pulled on, on a given pay statement versus what uh, our 401k company reports as the person's actual selection for their uh, for their with, uh, withdrawal. Okay. So as before, we're gonna jump right into uh, Monarch. And I have a couple of these tables already preloaded. So the uh, uh, report that we just looked at, the payroll report we just looked at, I can see a sort of a model already pre-existing for this. Um, 
we didn't talk about this the last few sessions, but I want to talk about just briefly how we can actually take uh, documents that we've uh, that we've created in the past and leverage them on new models. So you can see right now I have a section already for my earnings and deductions, and I want to actually just bring in the report that was already the report we just looked at a second ago. So I'm going to take that report and just drop it right on the actual payroll extractions uh, for the earnings, and it's going to automatically populate that report for me. Just again, as a recap, I'm going to go into the report design so you can see sort of the breakdown of how we extracted this information. Uh, here we use a series of templates. Again, we talked about quite a few of these from before, but just as a reference, we were able to identify the individual uh, sections of the earnings as the detail. Uh, and then the things that are associated with that we did as an append. So you'll notice things like the department, the individual, and their uh, employee number are all listed as a pen. We can tell by the coloring of those fields versus the individual line items here are going to be set as uh, our detailed template. What you'll also notice is that we do have some areas where there's no actual data, but there could potentially be data here. Um, so things we want to just kind of keep in mind as we're building this out. So what you'll notice is that our trap is actually very, fairly uh, small here in what we're looking for. What I'm banking on is that each employee will have uh, sort of the employee name and then employee number on the second line. So you'll notice that we're using that second line of our pattern to identify the pattern, in this case, that being a numeric value in that second line. And then we are able to capture those top two lines as the employee name and the employee number. Now, as you could imagine, that could become problematic this being such a loose template. Uh, we're only looking for just a numeric value, which could, as you could imagine, could appear anywhere in the document. So to uh, help ensure we're capturing just the right information. You notice there's quite a few uh, exception uh, exclusion templates that are itemized here. Uh, and again, those are just to ensure that we are having, if we have a scenario like this, for example, where we have a numeric value in that same spot, I don't necessarily want to capture the information on the line above. So I have just an exclusion there to uh, eliminate those for me. But this is all very similar to what we did from our trapping from the last time is where we defined a particular template. Uh, we'll define a pattern. And then we will extract the associated fields with it. One other thing I do want to point out here is again something new that we didn't use in our previous ones. We talked before about the different character class traps that you can leverage, but we didn't talk about the numeric or. This is a really great one uh, as well for this type of scenario. As you can see, as I'm looking at these values, I know there should be numeric values here or it should be blank. That's exactly what the numeric or is going to give you the flexibility to do. It's going to say look in this spot and if there's a numeric value there, uh, or if there's a blank value there, consider that a match for our, our pattern. Um, so it's given us a little flexibility here. You'll notice that here that even though there's no numeric value, you're still highlighting these fields for that very reason that these are numeric ORs. If I were to put an actual numeric here, you notice now it's going to exclude pretty much all the lines that we need because we're now saying there has to be a numeric value here versus with the numeric OR, we're basically saying that numeric value is optional. But it can only be numeric. So if there's text, there's numbers, letters, symbols, or anything else that's here, it will still exclude that record. It's only, it's only going to be either a numeric value or nothing is what this is effectively giving us the ability to do. Okay, so that's how we did the first portion of the extraction of the data from the report. And that'll get us to here. We do that both for our earnings and for our deductions. In particular, for the deductions, as you recall, this is the value that I'm mostly interested in. This is the percentage for how much is being withheld from a person's pay uh, for their 401k. I want to compare this to that uh, Excel report that we have from Fidelity. So let's go ahead and first load in that Excel document. Now, last time, again, we talked about how I can preview the document. I can change sort of the import rules on it. I'm not going to do that this time because I want to show you something a little bit different. Uh, so let's first load in the actual Excel report. And once that's loaded in, we can see exactly what happened here. The actual uh, header start on row two, and then the information starts row three and beyond. Uh, now, when you first load in the Excel report, you can actually tell it to skip a certain number of lines or where your header row actually resides. Uh, but in some scenarios, either you can do that, or you may have data up top that you still want to capture and do some uh, calculations on first before you actually define that header row. So I want to show you a slightly different way that we can get to that same result. Now that I'm in this table and I see that row two is where it actually contains my headers and three and below are where my actual data resides. What I can do is come to the 
margin of the row that has the header information, in this case, row two, I can right click and then set row uh, as column headers. And that'll transform the table for me, taking that row that we selected as the actual headers, and then the data will be associated directly below for each one of these. Now, from this report, the column that we're mostly interested in is going to be that new uh, deferral value. Remember, this is what we're actually checking to see if this matches what we are pulling from their current pay. One other thing I want to do is I want to convert this to numeric. So we can compare the one in the deep, uh, deductions report is already set to a numeric value. So in order to do that comparison, I just need them to be the same data type. Okay, great. So we have both now our deductions and our payroll, our, uh, um, 401k deductions report. So what I need to do at this point is just combine these two documents and then see where there's a delta be to, or difference between the values that are being extracted. So to combine the multiple reports, I'm going to first select the combine tab, and then we'll select the two tables of interest. So I'm going to start with my deductions table on the left, and then my um, 401k information on the right. I'm going to go ahead and join these by selecting the click to join button. Uh, remember, if you want to manually select the join key, you can, but there's always the option to recommend keys. And what this will do for you is take the most likely key for this to uh, populate on. In this case, it's saying the employee name from both the reports. You can definitely leverage that if you want, uh, or if you want to do something uh, different, you can as well. You can manually select. So in my case, I want to do the uh, employee ID uh, uh, from both the left and the right table. I can leverage those as, as well. Okay. Uh, once I have the uh, report combined, I can then decide which attributes I want to retain from both tables. My left table is fine. It has basic high-level information about the employee and their uh, payments. The right-hand side, I'm really only interested in just the new uh, deferral amount. Um, the other stuff I don't necessarily need. So I'm going to deselect uh, all attributes here. And I want to select just the uh, new deferral value that value, the one we just converted to numeric a second ago. And I'll create a new table. So just to recap here, what we have is we have uh, a new table that has both. <coughs> excuse me. It has both our actual um, deduction percentage combined with the deduction that our uh, pay, our four one can provider says that we should have. So the last thing we want to do is actually compare and see where there's differences. So I can already see a couple here where there's a, di a discrepancy, but instead of me going through each and every item on the list, I want to just filter this down and see where those exact discrepancies are. So let's first do a quick calculation. I'm going to leverage the calculator to do this. And I just want to see the difference between the 401k percentage and the deferral value. That should be zero if they are the same. Anywhere there's not zeros where we have a discrepancy. So let's go ahead and check. I'm going to do 401k value minus our deferral amount. And I'll okay, and I'll get a new column from that. And then, as you can imagine, finally, I just want to filter this column down. And I want to see here exactly where uh, this does not equal to zero. Remember, zero meaning they match, so there's no discrepancy. So anywhere where it's not zero is where I would have a discrepancy. So the final final piece is I can now see out of these particular individuals, these accounts is where my actual discrepancies reside. I can focus my time, effort, energy on make sure I rectify the uh, de deferral amount that's being pulled from an employee uh, for the next pay period to make sure I'm in compliance. Okay, and with that, uh, that gives us again a, just a, a decent overview of leveraging uh, Altair Monarch to extract data from payroll reports and then do sort of a reconciliation use case where I can verify that the, in this case, the deductions that are being pulled from an employee are in fact the ones uh, that they had uh, signed up for. As always, uh, the next steps for folks, if you do want to give the software a try, if you're already an Altera customer and have access to Altera units, you're able to leverage and download the software that we looked at today. Again, today we looked mostly at Monarch, but anything in our data analytics suite, you're able to have access to. Uh, for those that are attending the sessions, our next session, which will be two weeks from today, uh, we're going to cover a, a, another reconciliation type use case where we're going to uh, identify discrepancies within a report and to be able to do a sort of an overall reconciliation workflow for our designs. Uh, so if you're interested in that, I guess that's going to cover our next session. 
And always, if you have additional questions or like to know more about our DA uh, offerings or talk about potential use cases, again, feel free to always reach out to Jasmine. She is our uh, data analytics rep here at Altair for all of our aero and defense um, customers. Uh, so she'll be happy to help you if you have any additional questions about leveraging the solution. With that, I'd like to thank you for joining us today. Look forward to seeing you in our next session. Thanks again, everyone. Have a great day. Bye.